All right, I am here with uh, Fuente. On the left, we've got his 2016 Road Glide, and we are going to do a fuel pump change. Now, what was happening that uh, makes you want to change your fuel pump? Yeah, when I fired it up, it's gonna prime the pump. The biggest thing that I noticed, um, it had a more distinct garbled line to it. This is how your fuel pump should not sound when you turn it on. Um, it's more high pitched. Uh, normally what it's supposed to sound like, it's gonna be a consistent sound. It's not gonna have any variation, no garbledness, no anything like that. Um, like I said, it kept happening. Um, I could even hear it while I was riding down the street. Yeah, we're gonna make the change, swap it out. With that said, what do you say we get our hands dirty? Let's do it. But before we do, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell icon every time those are hit. Another biker joins a revolution and we would love to have you be part of it. All right, first thing we're doing is getting access uh, underneath the seat here and he's just removing the rear thumb bolt there and then he'll pull back on that seat and get it out of our way all right next he's going to remove the saddlebags here and those are our uh awesome rick rack saddlebag bolts in the law-abiding biker store a lot better than those stock ones and more secure and i will link to those in the description below all right so next you'll want to locate the gray plug underneath your seat and disconnect that we're gonna fire the bike up here in a second and purge the system um, of fuel out of the lines because it's under high pressure. So get that gray plug unplugged before you start it. Okay, so with that gray plug unplugged, he's gonna go ahead and fire the bike up and it should run for just a little bit. And die like that. And that means the fuel is uh, purged from the lines. Okay, so next just remove the uh, side cover there. Some uh, studs into the rubber grommets just pulls off. And that gives you access to the fuse box there. And he's going to pull his main master fuse. All right, so we are going to take the console off the tank here in a moment. So we got to uh, get some lines out of the way here. That's just a vent line. Usually it's zip tied down in there. You might have to clip that. And then you can just pop this vent line like so get that out of the way we've already got our gray plug unplugged so you're good to go there and on the uh, rear of the tank there's a 3 8 inch bolt head and uh, he's gonna back that out fuente your bike is filthy get some bug slide all right and on the front of that uh dash panel is a 5 30 seconds hex head bolt and he got that removed all right next he's going to go ahead and uh remove this gas cap and with that, he can go ahead and at least partially remove this panel, but there's a wire underneath here. All right, and that main plug there is just a push tab there, and then you can pull it out. All right, and now he can go ahead and get that uh, out of the way. All right, and we disconnected the lower part of this vent line. We're just going to get it out of our way, and he's going to disconnect up top there. All right, and of course, while we're under the dash panel, we're going to clean it up with some bug slide. That's right, our number one go-to waterless motorcycle cleaner. Available in the Law Abiding Biker store. Link in the description below. Tried and tested right here by the Law Abiding Biker crew. Good on your paint, your plastic, your helmets, your face shield, your seat. Good stuff. Again, link in the description below. All right, on the uh, top here is your top plate. And uh, he's going to start removing this. There is a cam ring removal tool if you want to buy it. Or you could just use like a punch, something with a blunt end. And you can see you just got a hammer on it there and it twists counterclockwise. And he just popped the ring there and he can get that up and out of our way. All right, just real quick, we'll get right back into your video. As you can imagine, a lot of man hour effort and expenses go into keeping this channel going strong. There is a way you can support us by becoming a patron member. I will link to it in the description below. There are benefits for signing up, such as t-shirts and stickers. You get access to the private Facebook group, which is a troll-free zone. It is nothing but bikers helping bikers. You get access to live video broadcasts and chat, podcasts early, access to premium videos up on request, and of course, access to those ride, meetup, and events. We appreciate you considering becoming a member. All right, let's get back into your video. All right, so he's gonna remove this top plate here, and fuel filter is underneath, and He's got to get it up out of there a bit higher, so just wiggle it around like he's doing. And once you wiggle it up out of there far enough, it exposes two lines there. And uh, we're going to be working with those on the rear there. Okay, so now he's going to disconnect the two lines here. And there's just a little ring up there, and you push the two tabs together. You can use your fingers. Maybe a screwdriver will help. And now he can pinch those together. 
and he's pulling down at the same time. And as you can see, he got that line removed. Don't worry about dropping it down in there. He'll move on to the next one. Same kind of system. He's just spinning it around so uh, it gives him a better opportunity to pinch those together there with his fingers. And then he can pull down on that line there. All right, and he got that one disconnected there. It was a little bit of a bear. So now we're gonna remove the uh, wiring from the top plate here, and it's just got a little push tab in it, that one. Push in and pull out on that guy. All right, so we wanna show you exactly how this other plug comes out. There is a uh, procedure to it. And if you look down in there, he's gonna put his screwdriver. There's actually a tab that latches around a little stud, and you gotta pry in on that. And the whole black plug comes out here. If you look down in there, you can clear the stud. All right, and once you clear that little stud down in there, you can see it comes out now. He's gonna show you what he was pushing on with his screwdriver. You gotta reach down in there and push on that to clear that stud, and then you can pull up. But it is a pretty tight plug, so you have to wiggle it back and forth a bit to get it out. All right, and with everything free, you can take this over to our workbench now. Okay, so you don't necessarily need to do this, but it came uh, in the kit we got, and that's your pressure regulator. So we're gonna go ahead and change it out here. And there's just a uh, clip that goes around there and some ears that he's prying on with a screwdriver. Both sides there. Once you get both of those popped, you can get that clamp off of there. All right, next he's gonna pull this uh, wire out and you just pry up on the bottom with a screwdriver and it slides out of that channel. And now he's just gonna grab the uh, pressure regulator and you can just wiggle it. It's just got an O-ring and you can pop it out there. All right, now he's re going in there with a screwdriver and getting rid of that O-ring, and then there's the lower assembly portion. Pop that out of there. And there's one small O-ring down in there that you'll need to get out because the new assembly comes with everything you need, and it's all contained there in one unit. And he's gonna go ahead and seat that back into place there. All right, and he's just uh, working on getting that down in there. You can put a little lubrication on it. It will help get it down in there. Next, he's gonna pop that uh, wire and put it back into the channel there. And now he's going back on with that horseshoe shaped clip. The other thing that came out of our kit is a new gasket for the top plate there. So he's gonna remove the old one and he'll start seating that new gasket into place. There is a channel that goes around there. All right, and so there's one wire here before we pull the float that he's gonna remove just so we don't have to contend with it. It's just got a tab, he pries up with a screwdriver there and then you can separate it. Okay, so that wire we unplugged was to the fuel level indicator. And uh, now our fuel pump wires are free uh, along with the float there. And you can see it back in there. He's gonna reach in there. There's a tab back in there. And he's gotta pull up on that tab. And once he pulled up on that tab, that freed everything. And now he can fish that float, work on fishing that float up out of the tank. It's kinda gotta manipulate it around. And just to give you an idea, this is what your float and system will look like. All right, so now he's gonna take the fuel pump assembly. There's just a tab up front that you can uh, pull up on again, and then it slides forward. And we're gonna kind of get it free there so we can remove the actual fuel line here. And he just slid it back there. All right, and you can see the main fuel line on it there. He's gonna reach in there. And once you reach in there, you can just squeeze there. Remember, the it's kind of a plastic horseshoe that goes around there, and you squeeze both of them. And he's gonna pull on that line as he's doing that. And he's just kind of wiggling it back and forth there. They're pretty tight. And there we go, we got it separated. All right, and with everything disconnected now, he can start working that uh, fuel pump assembly out of there. And he's just kind of twisting it, you can see. And he's rotating the whole thing counterclockwise there. And that'll free it up. And there is your uh, fuel pump. Just getting a rag because it might drip a little bit there. And that is what your fuel pump and assembly looks like. So now he's gonna remove the pump filter and there's just two plastic tabs, one on each side. And he's just gonna squeeze in on those and that will release that filter. All right, so there's a zip tie around all those hoses and wire, he's just gonna clip that, get it out of the way, start freeing some stuff up here. Then there's a plug there that he's working on and you can see there's tabs on both sides that he's prying up with the screwdriver and then he can pull that plug out of there. So now he's gonna work on getting these lines off of here and we have new ones, so it really doesn't matter. He's just gonna slice the bottoms of them there with a razor. And then he can go ahead and once you put a slice in them, they come off pretty easy. And he's just working on that next one, doing the same thing. And got that one out of the way there. And now he's working on the other end of that small line there. And there we go, that one's off. 
All right, now off the two ends of the old hoses are those plugs or clips that we're going to need. So he's going to take the hose same way, slicing it and pulling them off. And there he got that off so we can use it on our new line. And he's just pulling that last line off of there. Now he's going to take the end cap off here that's over the fuel pump. And there's three tabs that you've got to push in on. And that will release that. And that is your old fuel pump that we're going to be replacing. All right. And so the blue one is our new fuel pump. And again, links to all this in the description below. He's going to pull off the protective black rubber cap there. And then you'll see two black uh, rings, pretty large rings on the old one. And they've got two flat sides. He's going to make sure and he puts that back on the same exact way, one on top there. And then there's another protective rubber cap there on the new one. And that big rubber ring with feet there on the bottom. He's going to pop that off and pop it back on the same way. All right, and with his new pump, he's going to go back up in the housing there. And while he's doing that, don't forget, we also have our fuel filter replacement video. I'll link to it in the description below. And going back on with this plastic end cap there, lining up the tabs and snapping that into place. All right, so in this kit comes two different hoses. They're two different sizes, the longer of the two. You'll see where he's going to hook that up there. All right, so these can be a bear to get on and over the barb. So we have a heat gun. We're just going to heat it up a little bit, get that plastic to expand. Just don't overheat it, of course. And he's going to add just a little more oil there and work on getting that on there. And there we go. That did it. And just move it up to that top one there and putting a little oil on it. And he'll apply some heat to this one too. And with that heated up and lubed up, it's going to slide that one over the barbs there. And you're just working that back and forth on there. All right, we're just going to work on putting this uh, plug that we took off back on. He's lubing that up. And this is the shorter line of the two. And he's going to give uh, some heat to that too. And now he can work that back into place there. All right, and for the other end of that shorter line, a little bit of lubrication again. And he'll apply some heat and he'll work that shorter line on there. All right, and so the replacement line that came in our kit isn't a ribbed line like the one we took off, but it's just a black line. So he's going to work that on there. And these ones, we didn't have to heat up. All right, and this top one's being just a little bit of a bugger. So he's going to add a little bit of lube there and add just a little bit of heat there. All right, and that black line was a bear to get on there, guys. And what we ended up doing is it's just the right amount of heat to it, and then it will go on easy. But obviously, there's a fine line there of overheating it and melting it. So... uh just keep trying. And one thing you might try is before you put the ribbed line on so that you have some extra room for your hand, you can put the black line on. That uh, may give you extra room to twist it on there. Okay, and he's just taking that stock plug and plugging it back in. And this kit did come with a plug, but uh, it's kind of a universal kit and we're not using it. We're just going back in with the stock wiring. And there's a little channel in there uh, that he's gonna work that wiring into. All right, and he's gonna go back on with his pump filter and it only goes on one way there. He's just lining it up and it will uh, click into place there. All right, so he's ready to go back in the tank with his uh, pump assembly there. And he's gonna push that down in there. And uh, then as he's doing that, kind of rotate it clockwise because that uh, pump goes all the way to the left side of the tank there. So he's got everything there and he's just gonna work that back down into place. And remember there's a channel there and you heard it. He slid it into place there and it clicks into place in that channel. All right, and so now he's gonna take his main line and hook it to the actual fuel pump and it should just slide on there. And that line's clicked back in place there. All right, now he's just going back in with that float and you kinda gotta just turn it there and he'll work that back down into the tank. And now he's just working that float bracket back into the front uh, channels there just get it lined up and click it into place and there we go now we'll take the uh, wires there and click those back into place all right so he just fished in there for his fuel lines and you can't mix them up because one is smaller than the other that's the big one there and he's going to work that back into place and that one's secured he'll go on with the smaller one here and get that clicked into place and now we've got both fuel lines back on. All right, and he's taking that main plug. It only goes one way back into the top plate there. Click that tab back into place. All right, and he's going back in with the single wire there. Just make sure it's turned the right way and it should click into place. And now he can rotate the entire 
filter and top plate and just work all the wires and lines back down into the tank here. All right, and he's got everything uh, down in the tank and he can set that top plate back in place. All right, so we're ready to go back on with our cam ring and it says top, uh, so it's very easy to know which side goes up. Pop that into place. And this is gonna turn clockwise. There is a specialty tool for this if you wanna get it. He's just starting it with a hammer there. And then you can take a blunt object like a punch. And he's gonna continue turning it back into place. All right, and just kind of putting things back in place here. That's his breather tube. Don't forget to hook that up top there. And he'll come to the rear here and hook it back up. And going back with his main plug there, only goes one way. And with that, he can rock the dash panel back in place here. He's lining the filler spout up there. And he's gonna put that bolt back up front of the dash panel, 5.30 seconds hex head. All right, and back on with his gas cap there. And don't forget about that bolt at the rear of the tank here. And that is a 3 8 inch socket that he's putting on there and he'll snug that down. All right, and he's gonna plug the gray plug back in there and he will fish his vent line back down the right side of the bike. And he's just going back in with the master fuse. All right, just going back on with the side panel there and he's just lining the uh, plastic studs up with the grommets there and you can just pop it back into place. And going back on with the saddlebag, putting it in place. And of course, back on with the seat, sliding that front tongue into place and he'll secure the rear there with his thumb bolt.